church. It is so good to be together today. It is time for worship. I hope you are ready in your living rooms, whether you're sitting in your easy chair or in your bed. Uh, maybe you're sitting at the kitchen table. We're so glad you've joined us today. And we are going to celebrate and exalt the name of Jesus because there is no other God like our God. Amen. Say amen. 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 Let's worship.
Church, and thank you so much for joining with us today on our online service of Life Church of Fort Collins. This is Pastor Rodney, and as always, it's good to have you here with us today. Now, if you're in Fort Collins or if you're all around the United States, I want to let you know that you are a part of our Life Church family, and we are so excited uh, to be with you here today and to serve you uh, online. Uh, during this service, just as a reminder, uh, there is a live prayer button. 
Listen, if you need to be uh, prayed for, if you are having something uh, in your life that you just want to ask someone to help you lift up before God, please make sure that you click the live prayer button uh, right next to uh, the chat window there and make sure that you actually connect with one of our prayer partners. Also, if you're new with us today, hey, listen, a big life church welcome to you. We want to make sure that you are able to uh, connect with us and we can connect with you. Plus, we'd like to give you a free gift this week just to actually uh, say thank you for joining us today. If you would, please click the new here button right above and uh, just fill out the form and we'll connect with you this week and get you that uh, free gift out as well. But right now, before we get into uh, meet and greet uh, and the message, here's what's happening at Life Church this week. You can still help those in need in Larimer and Weld counties through donating your canned goods to our Serve 6.8 food drive. Just place your non-perishable goods in the tub outside of the back entrance of the church that is labeled Serve 6.8 and we'll get them to the distribution facility in Fort Collins. You can also go to their website at serve68.org to see how you can get involved and volunteer. If this is your first time here with us at Life Church Fort Collins online service, we are so glad that you are joining us today. We would love to send you a free gift in the mail this week just for spending your time with us today. All you have to do is click the new here button at the top right of your screen to connect with us and we'll make sure to get that gift out to you this week. In an effort to take all precautions necessary to keep all of the people in our congregation safe and healthy, we will continue to have our church services online through the month of May. Please continue to share this link with your family and friends as God has been moving in powerful ways online. Share it on Facebook, Instagram, email. You never know who God might be working on to take their next steps of faith. Parents, remember to have your amazing kids join us every Sunday here at this link at 1 p.m. for our exciting Life Church Kids online service. There's high energy worship with fun motions, a practical lesson from God's Word, as well as a time of learning how God's Word applies to their lives. It's an online adventure your kids for sure don't want to miss. During this season of quarantine, it's easy to still be able to give to Life Church to support the ministry and to help continue to build God's kingdom here in Fort Collins and around the world. You can give online at our website or simply mail your check directly to the church. Well, all right, we're back. And I uh, just want to say, listen, if you have any questions at all about any of those announcements, all you have to do is send us a message, give us a call at the church office, and we'll be very happy to be able to answer any of your questions that you may have. But right now, what we're going to do is we're going to chat and say hello, uh, let everyone know where you're from, uh, give, uh, give some virtual high fives and all of that in the chat window. We're going to put a 60 second timer in for the next minute. Say hello to as many people as you possibly can. Well, I hope you enjoyed yourself and uh, was able to connect with a few people uh, online. I know everybody's looking forward to getting back together, uh, hopefully as soon as we possibly can. Uh, but right now we have a great message from Pastor Matt in our series, Be Still. Well, it is good to be together today, uh, Life Church family. It is so good to worship together, and it is so wonderful to have each one of you joining us today online as we dive into God's Word. We're going to continue our series today called Be Still. And in the midst of this pandemic, when things are swirling around us, and as we talked about last week, there's such uncertainty, things changing every day, all kinds of news and, and information from the media. 
I want to encourage you today, would you go ahead and open your Bibles to Psalm chapter 4. Psalm chapter 4. And as we continue our Be Still message series, in Psalm chapter 4, we are going to read about a prescription for peace. A prescription for peace. Peace. Now, as we get started uh, today, before we read our scripture for the message today, I wanted to share with you uh, a story as we open today. And uh, Amy and I recently purchased uh, a brand new mattress, a brand new bed for our master bedroom. Now, mind you, uh, the bed we had been sleeping in was a king size bed. We've had it for over 20 years. And, uh, you know, as beds get older, those warranties only last for seven to ten years. Of course, we went twice that and uh, had this bed for 20 years. You know, you end up with those divots in the mattress and, and all of that. And needless to say, it was, it was time for a new bed. And, uh, and so, surprisingly to us, uh, during this pandemic, you, you can't really go to a furniture store or a mattress store and try out uh, a bunch of new beds because of this coronavirus. And so we ended up doing a bunch of research online and uh, found this specific bed we were going to want to order. And it was the type of bed where you can order it online. It comes shipped to your door. Now, kind of like uh, Christmas morning. Uh, we had been waiting. We had the date of delivery on our calendar uh, when this bed was going to arrive at our doorstep. And surprisingly to us, uh, we get a, a phone call from the delivery company three days earlier than the bed was supposed to be delivered saying, hey, we're going to be at your house tomorrow morning. We've received your mattress and uh, we're ready to deliver it. So make sure you're at your house tomorrow morning. So uh, this was a few days in advance what we were expecting, so we had to scramble around. Of course, in order to get this new bed into our bedroom, we were going to have to move our old king mattress, and uh, we were going to take it up two flights of stairs to one of our kids' bedrooms and let them have it. And uh, have you ever tried to move a king-size mattress with just two people? And we didn't have any moving straps or anything like that, uh, or a mattress bag. We didn't have any of those cool uh, tools. And we had to, just with our own bare hands, maneuver this king-size mattress up uh, two flights of stairs uh, to one of our kids' bedrooms. And uh, let's just say there was a lot of wrangling. There was uh, blood involved and a lot of sweat. There was anger, there was frustration, there was exhaustion and tears, and all of those things are literal. Literally, all of those things happened as we're trying to move this bed up two flights of stairs. So finally, we get the uh, old bed moved, and uh, sure enough, there is a, a knock at our door, and uh, the new mattress is arriving. Now, this mattress we ended up purchasing it's called a purple mattress, and uh, we ended up uh, deciding to continue with a king-sized mattress. So we we purchased this purple mattress. And the interesting thing when you purchase one of these is it comes rolled up in a tube. And uh, this thing weighed at our doorstep. I'm not kidding. The actual shipping weight of just the mattress was 176 pounds. Uh, it's made of this special material on the top of the mattress. It's this gel that's that's in like this grid shape, and it's supposed to support your body. And so we get this thing delivered at our door. It is this huge tube filled with a 176-pound mattress, and uh, we've got to get this thing into our house and into our master bedroom and, and get the platform put together and get it put on there and all that. You know, it's interesting because mattresses have come a long way over the years, haven't they? Uh, you know, back in the day, you'd have a mattress filled with maybe uh, hay or straw or, or grass. Uh, eventually, as things uh, evolved, uh, they started filling them with uh, wool and things like that. Of course, 
In the last hundred years, all of a sudden, uh, we've got these inventions called box springs that you can set a mattress on top of. Uh, as you fast forward, you know, there's pillow top mattresses that has a, a comfy kind of a pillow top to it to lay on. Uh, back in the, maybe you remember this back in the 70s and 80s, uh, they had waterbed mattresses. You remember those? Uh, I, in fact, had one of those when I was in high school. And uh, I remember going to bed every night and this thing was, you had a heater in it and you'd lay on it and, and uh, it was a full wave waterbed. Uh, after that, well, they came up with air beds, right? Select comfort where you can set uh, the amount of pressure and firmness with a, a dial and it fills it with air or lets air out of it. And after that, they came up with what do they call that? Tempur-Pedic memory foam mattresses that kind of hold in your shape to support. Well, in the last number of years, they did come up with this mattress called the Purple Mattress. And we got that thing finally set up in our room uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And needless to say, now that it's set up, uh, we've experienced much better comfort and sleep every night since. So with that in mind, uh, go ahead and take a look at Psalm chapter 4. And what we're going to read is a portion of what's called David's night prayer. And so let's go ahead and jump into Psalm chapter 4, starting in verse 4. This is what David writes. He says, be angry and do not sin. On your bed, reflect in your heart and be still. Offer sacrifices in righteousness and trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who can show us anything good? Look on us with favor, Lord. Verse 7, you've put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and new wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, Lord, make me live in safety. That's just the second half of David's night prayer. And with that in mind, let's take a look at David's prescription for peace that we find in this prayer. First of all, when you need peace, begin by reflecting in your heart. Begin by reflecting in your heart. Now, you know that sometimes you get so angry that physiologically, maybe you begin to shake or, or tremble. Has that ever happened to you? Uh, or maybe you have another negative emotion, like the emotion of fear. Have you been so afraid or, or terrified that you're actually trembling in fear? Have you ever been so upset that you could not sleep at night, or it caused you to have insomnia. See, there are some interesting things that happen both in your body and your brain when you get angry or upset. Let me just read this to you for a moment. Uh, this is scientific research that, uh, of what happens when you get angry. You see, generally when an individual becomes angry, they experience some form of physiological sign or signs. Uh, other signs of anger include things like this. A dramatic increase of your breathing rate, unconscious tensing of your muscles, especially maybe the muscles of your face and your neck. Uh, you might start sweating, feeling hot or cold. You might experience shaking in your hands. Your, your face may turn pale or red and veins may become visible due to an increase in your blood pressure. You may get goosebumps uh, on your body, or you may also experience a release of adrenaline in your body that creates a surge of power. See, it's in your brain where you process all of your emotional stress. And when your brain senses threat or harm, millions of these nerve fibers within your brain release chemicals throughout your body to every organ. And when you experience anger, it causes your brain to release these stress hormones called adrenaline and noradrenaline. These chemicals help your body control your heart rate. They help your body control blood pressure. 
And the release of these chemicals also help regulate your pancreas, which controls your blood sugar. Now, studies that were conducted at the Hodgkin's Brain Institute in Calgary have found that one way anger affects your brain is by compromising the neurons in your hypothalamus. That's the, your brain's command center for stress response. Now, normally, these neurons receive different chemical signals that prompt them to turn on and off. Stress and anger compromise these functions, and they jeopardize your brain's ability to actually slow down. What? One more thing. You see, also when you get angry, the muscles in your body tense up. The anger causes the neurotransmitter chemicals in the brain that are called catecholamines to flow through your body, giving you a burst of energy that can last for several minutes. This then triggers a reaction in other parts of the body, such as increased heart rate, heightened blood pressure, intensified breathing. Lots of different responses that happen both in your brain and your body when you become angry or upset. Now, I share all that with you because instead of responding to a crisis like we're in now with anger, instead, according to David, we need to reflect in our heart. And, and what does it mean to reflect in your heart? Well, it means that you're going to meditate on God and his word. In Psalm chapter 119, verse 15, this is what is written. I will meditate on your precepts, and I will think about your ways. See, when you reflect in your heart, it involves thinking about God and his word and his ways. You also need to, as you reflect, think and identify what is actually troubling you? What are the things that are actually bothering you? See, there's a difference between what we call primary and secondary emotions. What is actually causing you to feel upset? You need to think about and evaluate. What are the things that are causing you to actually feel angry or feel afraid? What thoughts and perceptions are you experiencing that are below the surface of your emotions that are causing you to feel the way that you feel. And this is how it's written in Psalm 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See, when we reflect in our heart, we're asking God to help us search both our thoughts and our feelings. Next, as you're reflecting in your heart, you need to deal with your anger. Interestingly, the Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 quotes this very verse from Psalm chapter 4 that we just read. And let me read it to you from Ephesians chapter 4 verses 26 and 27. This is what the Apostle Paul writes. He says, be angry and do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. And don't give the devil an opportunity. See, the Apostle Paul here in quoting David emphasizes that the way in which we choose to deal with our anger and negative emotions, those that response, the way we deal with it, is going to directly impact our spiritual life. It's going to directly impact our relationship with God. And in fact, Paul writes it just the way David wrote it. And he quotes it exactly and says, Be angry and do not sin. See, according to Paul, as you're reflecting in your heart, lying in your bed at night, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Don't go to sleep carrying that burden of negative emotion, carrying that burden of anger and those anxious thoughts and feelings. Finally, as you're reflecting in your heart, it means you're going to give your situation or the crisis that you find yourself in the midst of, you're going to give your situation to God in prayer. 1 Peter chapter 5, 
verse 7. Cast all your anxiety upon him, talking about God, because he cares for you. You know, as you're reflecting in your heart, part of that reflection is prayerfully casting your situation to God, giving your situation to God, giving those emotions to God, giving those feelings to God, giving even your very anger to God, saying, God, take this anger. I give you this situation. You see, when you reflect on God, meditate on God and His Word, casting your anxieties on Him, in the midst of doing that, you realize the size of your problem versus the size of God. And there is no problem, there is no crisis that is so big, God can't handle it. Even the crisis of the coronavirus pandemic, in respect to the size of God, it's nothing. It's nothing. God is greater. Now, secondly, as we read in Psalm chapter 4, after you reflect, take time to be still. Now, at this point, I would imagine if you've been following along with us online during this series, you're becoming an expert on being still uh, during this crisis. And as we discussed last week, part of being still involves active surrender of your control over any situation. In order to be still, you've got to surrender. You've got to give up. You've got to put your hands up and give the situation to God in surrender. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. This is what Jesus says about surrendering. He says, whoever wants to be my disciple, whoever wants to follow me, must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. Talk about surrender. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, Paul writes this, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Wow. Each and every day, each and every situation, each and every moment, we remain crucified with Christ. That means after you reflect and after you're evaluating where your anger is coming from, you got to surrender. You got to remember that you are crucified with Christ. You no longer live. It's Christ who lives in you. The other part about being still, it involves silencing your own voice and listening to the voice of God. Psalm chapter 62, verse 5. For God alone, O oh my soul, wait in silence. For my hope is from Him. Isn't it ironic that both of these actions of surrender and Silence. Both of these actions are the opposite of how our sinful nature wants to respond when we feel angry and upset. Usually in our sin nature, we don't want to give up control. We want to take more control. Usually in our sin nature, when we're angry, we, we don't want to be silent. No, we want to yell and make sure everybody understands, including God, how mad we are about the situation. But no, after you reflect in your heart, laying in your bed, you need to be still through surrendering and being silent. Finally, according to David in Psalm chapter 4, don't forget to rest. Don't forget to rest. See, sleep is an important part of your overall health. Did you know that? Ten reasons that getting good sleep is important. Let me just share these with you. Poor sleep is linked to higher body weight. Good sleepers tend to eat fewer calories through the day. Good sleep can improve concentration and productivity. Good sleep can maximize 
your athletic performance. Poor sleepers have a greater risk of heart disease and stroke. Sleep also affects uh, your glucose metabolism and type 2 diabetes risk. Poor sleep is linked to depression. Sleep improves your immune function. Poor sleep is linked to increased inflammation in your body. And finally, number 10, sleep affects both your emotions and social interactions the following day. Proverbs chapter 3. You know, we think this is new information, that somehow newly in the last 50 or 100 years, we've discovered all these amazing things about our bodies and as it relates to rest and to sleep. But no, God has known from the very beginning. And we know that God's word is true. And in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 24, Solomon writes this. He says, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. You know, instead of having a restless night of sleep, the promise of God's word is that when you fully trust in the Lord, not only are you delivered from your fears, but your sleep will be sweet. See, from the very beginning of time, God has intended for you to rest. Hebrews chapter 4, the writer of Hebrews in verse 9 says this, There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his, you see, in the very book of Genesis, in the very beginning of the Bible, we see God created the world in six days, and on the seventh day, God rested. And just like God rested from his work, we too are called and commanded to rest from our work. Now, you know, if you study the book of Hebrews, that Jesus himself became the fulfillment as our Sabbath rest. In him, we find the ultimate fulfillment of God's eternal plan of rest, that we no longer have to work for salvation. Our salvation is no longer based on our works. No, Jesus has done the work for us, and in him, we have Sabbath rest. And we find fulfillment in Him alone. Now as we close today, I want to say this, that for a number of you, the truth of the Word of God today, the truth of this message of being still is that the Lord wants to combat anxiety in your life. The Lord wants to combat depression in your life. He wants to combat insomnia. He wants to combat for some of you anger or even just general overall stress that you're experiencing in your life right now. And I realize as a part of this pandemic that even for those who normally experience these kinds of negative emotions and have these kinds of experiences a lot of that is intensified in situations like we find ourselves in right now. And the good news is, God wants to combat that in your life. 1 John chapter 5, this is what we read. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. The only way you're going to find victory over your depression, the only way you're going to find victory over your anxiety, the only way you're going to find victory over your anger problems, your rage, the only way you're going to find victory over your stress is through Jesus Christ. You must believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, a great way to remember this prescription of 
peace that we've talked about today are the very letters that we use, at least in the English language, for prescription. You've been to the pharmacy and you read those letters R X. It's a great way to remember this prescription for peace we've talked about today. R X. Number one, you need to reflect on Christ. You need to reflect on Christ and who he is and his word. Secondly, you need to remember the cross as we've got to surrender. We've got to be still. We've got to remember that we as believers are crucified with Christ. And thirdly, you need to rest in the comforter. You got to rest in the comfort. You need to get good sleep. Now, a number of years ago, when Amy and I were getting ready to finish our youth ministry, we were involved with in Michigan. As we were leaving, uh, the youth group gave us a gift. They made this incredible quilt. I, hopefully, you can see that there. They, they made us this incredible quilt, and, and in each one of these squares, there's a little, a little love note of appreciation. And uh, this quilt has served for us as a reminder of the students and families that, that God impacted their lives through our ministry we had in Michigan. And, and I, I share this with you because this blanket, this quilt, this comforter really illustrates how the Holy Spirit has been given to us as our comforter. See, in wrapping myself in this, I can look at these truths of Scripture. I can look at the truths of the encouragements that are written on this quilt, and I can be encouraged. If I'm having a tough day, if I'm having a rough season, in ministry, I can take this out and remember the goodness of God. And each one of these faces, each one of these people, these students, these parents uh, that were entrusted to our care, and I, it makes my heart smile. And in the same way, Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit as our comforter. Think about it, a blanket at night when you're laying in bed and you're reflecting and you're meditating and you're thinking and, and if it's cold and it's the middle of the winter or you get the chills, you can grab your comforter, you can wrap up in your comforter and it brings warmth to your heart and your body and your mind. You can feel safe. And in the same way, the Holy Spirit has been given to us as our comforter to remind us of the truth of God's word and his character. How did Jesus say it in John chapter 14? He said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. You see, the Holy Spirit is your comforter in this crisis. The Holy Spirit will remind you of the truth of God's word. The Holy Spirit will give you victory over your anger. Because we know that one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is peace. One of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, one of the parts of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is patience, and of course, love. Let me pray for you right now as we close. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that you've given us the gift of the Holy Spirit to be our comforter, to be our counselor. Lord, to remind us of your the truth of your word. And I pray right now for each and every person who's watching this online today. Lord, I pray that they would know the nearness of the Holy Spirit. They would know the comfort of the Holy Spirit right now. And even now, would you begin to bring to their mind the truth of your word. And Father, for each one of us, we ask that you would 
Help us to continue, even every single night as we lay upon our beds, to reflect upon you. Lord, help us as we're laying (coughs) on our bed. Lord, help us to remember that we're crucified with you and that we truly would rest in you as our Sabbath rest. Lord, I pray for each and every one right now that you would free them from restlessness, free them from anxiety, free them from fear, give them victory over anger and rage, victory over stress, give them your peace. And Lord, we thank you that we have victory in you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Isn't God good? All right, let's worship.